Siberia the World Before, the fourth installment in the franchise, is expected to come in 2021, with pre-orders already open. It means that we may eventually get just four years between the third and the fourth installments. Just to note, there were 13 years between the second and the third. The sneak peek that Microids and Monsieur Benoit Sokal released in 2020 is a free game demo of the game Siberia the World Before. With it, the company is probably testing the environment, the audience and the optimization. To get this irritating topic out of the way, the demo was barely playable with a midweight gaming computer a day after the official release. There were lags, freezes and stuttering regardless of which graphic setting was active if you are using an SSD or a standard HDD. Many people on Steam complained of crashes which I personally didn't experience. Yay! Optimization was also one of the main issues with my playthrough of Siberia 3 which happened within the first week of its release. Let me remind you of that abysmal playthrough with just a few clips from my streams. I am quite bothered by the lack of optimization and the plethora of technical issues in the demo. I really hope that microids find more and better testers and devs to help the project become as technically awesome as Siberia deserves. Now that we got this out of the way, let's focus on the beautiful visuals, ignoring the obvious stuttering in the cutscenes, and the plot which seems to be neatly incorporated into the fourth part of Kate Walker's story. First of all, let's meet the new character, 17-year-old Dana Rose. She lives in 1937 in a town called Wagen, Osterhaus capital. But there is so much more to her than just a pretty face and a calm personality. She's an artist and what an artist she is. The town seems to be a beautiful small town with a lot to add to the mystery. Maybe it's not in size, but Wagen could be a big influence in the history books to come. The prologue spends a fourth of the story on presenting Dana to us, her abilities and her exceptional musical talents. This said, I have to emphasize on the lack of intuitivity in the inventory interactions and just how uncomfortable they seem to me personally. I kept clicking on the wrong command and item. Ugh. On top of the inventory awkwardness, there seem to be a few moments where we only get an unnecessary interaction for the sake of just having an interaction, instead of a fully fledged puzzle, that is. Please, Monsieur Sokal, put more puzzles in the game! The next scene I will leave in all of its glory, unedited because I am in love. The melodies, the movement, the details of the automatons, the personalities and the stories they tell you with each nut and bolt, this is Siberia.
I can watch the scene millions of times and it's still just as pleasurable and as enjoyable as in the first run. Mind you, I may as well have reached that number already. Inuzer, hopefully that's the right pronunciation, and his compositions add a sense of etiquette of environmental immersion that, for me personally, are working pretty well. And now we meet Kate Walker. Well, she has gone through stuff. Considering how Kate was in the third game, not even mentioning the two installments before that, she has seen some pain and suffering for sure. How, what and when? These are questions, the answers to which I hope to find in the upcoming game. So we meet Kate in a cell with another woman who is almost exactly a copy of her, visually that is. Same hairdo, similar clothes, even when they talk in a zoomed in scene or two, it's very hard to make sense of these similarities. Maybe Katusha is Kate's long lost twin sister. And the romantic relationship many saw between them is actually sisterly love? I wouldn't put my finger on it for sure. Do I even want to go in the zone where I explain how similar Kate and Katusha are as name origin and meaning? Katya is basically Kate's name in Slavic and I do know a thing or two about these cultures. Something you will probably notice in the demo is how submissive Kate has become. From a rebellious young lawyer, she has somehow become a slave to others. I really can't wait to see and experience the events which led to such a change in her character. Mind you, I'm not as delusional. I know it's probably never going to be explained. And now we reach yet another awkward interaction. Why, oh why do I need to click on this single button only to have her wash her face? I tried not clicking, which would normally lead to a different development in the events. I played the game three times, that demo I mean, but alas, this is a very linear prologue. It just waited for me to click instead of bringing to life either the action expected or another one. Some things any longtime fan of the franchise would appreciate are the many references to the prequels. Here we see Oscar's heart, a bit broken but still able to function, if only we meet the requirements. A long-lasting quest awaits for sure. The inventory view is rather innovative. While we do have the old-school notepad and journal, the actual inventory and items are inside the notebook itself. Curious, and I definitely like this approach. If you have played the prologue, you probably have noticed that each of the main characters' episode ends with a key scene. The second part of Dana's story in this prologue meets us with her family. We are introduced to the piece of drama which is incorporated in her own world and life. She is not just shy, she has her <clears throat> reasons. Not to mention the nationalistic views that some of their neighbors have trying to banish their kind away from Wachen. She's young, she's talented and she's the daughter of artists who are considered persona non grata. As the time frame is just at the end of the Second World War, we cannot exclude the intended references to real times and places. The game uses old-school loading screens with static non-interactive scenes, which however are so beautiful that I can't complain. I just wonder if I would be able to say the same when I'm playing the full game. Seems a bit too much. Okay, this is getting absurd. Why do I have to click and drag some card when I could have had a true puzzle trying to start it? Not to mention that the setup of key elements appearing only after doing something else may create chaos. For me, personally, in real life, removing the brakes or releasing them is the first thing I would do. They become active, however, only after my character discovers that the card cannot be moved. This is not cool devs and not intuitive. And now we have the opportunity to see some of the supposedly epic textures in the game. Yeah, It's not that great when you notice the hair and skin textures though. But oh wait, 
the fabric on her Zoom team bum is epic! One of the most pleasurable moments puzzle-wise for me was the train cabin. I can only congratulate the makers for the way they incorporated the puzzles and locks within the story and the character they created by just letting us read letters and use items. Yes, I am talking about the corpse in that chair. One thing is certain, however, regardless of how great and lucky our two girls are, cause we have no idea how much of the adventure will be shared between Kate and Katusha, and if Katusha even exists, there will always be someone who will chase and hunt them, old school Siberia style. A thing I would like to show you all is how many purely programming people were credited for the work on this game. While we do have a number of designers in the prologue's credits, I could find just a few programmers in the list. Especially after the fiasco of a technical failure that was the third title in the series, I believe we needed more. Please guys, just focus on the technical stuff. Monsieur Bonio Asukail already knows how to write the perfect story for this series. So what's the final verdict? For me, Siberia, the world before prologue, was enjoyable on my last playthrough. Considering the patches fixed most of the technical issues I experienced in my first playthrough, video of which you were watching during this review, I think that they did quite a good job and I am actually expecting the new full game with a bit of excitement. There, I said it. I am actually feeling positive about it. I definitely recommend you to test the demo, see how it runs on your computer, and once the game comes out, hopefully in 2021, we will be able to enjoy, finally, a well-developed, well-thought-of, well-written continuation of Kate Walker's story. This concludes my first game review. It was pleasure creating it. Now, drop a comment and tell me, what do you think about Siberia the World Before Prolo?